Aaron Rodgers versus Mark Murphy. It is official. Me versus them. He's doubling down. He's not backing off. And I'm here for it. Aaron Rodgers, last night, goes on uh, Sports Center. He's in Hawaii with his uh, fiance and uh, celebrity friends. He's playing the guitar. He's got the hair tied back. He is all hipster on the islands. And he's not folding. And he doesn't care. And he makes it very clear it's about the Packer front office, namely Mark Murphy and Brian Kudenkens, the GM. Us versus them. Me versus you. Aaron's saying, listen, I got no other options. You owe my contract for three years. There's no owner for me to curry favor with. Um, I'm, I'm losing the power struggle here because clearly you're not listening. Clearly you're tone deaf. The Packers have drafted one ride receiver in the first round in 32 years. Aaron's 10 years in Green Bay, nine of the first round picks defense. They wouldn't sign Jared Cook. They got rid of his quarterback coach. Didn't even tell him. Aaron's saying, you know, I'm clearly losing the cultural power struggle here. You're not listening. You're tone deaf. So uh, let's put it out there. Me versus you. I'm not going to show up to OTAs. I don't care about the fine. And Aaron's not being outrageous here. Although, go to Packer websites and message boards. Ooh, he has lost a lot of fans. But Aaron wants to be treated like Patrick Mahomes. You know, Kansas City spent a fortune to build an all-star offensive line this past offseason. And and by the way, last year off a Super Bowl win, first round, went and got a running back. He wants to be treated like Tom Brady. Tom wanted Gronk. They got it for him. He wanted A.B. They got it for him. He wanted Leonard Fournette. They got it for him. He wanted him re-signed. Check, check, check. He wants to be treated like Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson complained publicly. They upgraded, got him a Pro Bowl left guard, got him a real good tight end, gave him a new offensive coordinator. Aaron's saying, hey, I mean, I already don't have an owner. We already can't sign free agents. We're already backwards, 50-year-old men wearing cheese hats. Uh, There's some things I want here to be treated like a star and how other guys get treated, where they ask for stuff and get it. And Aaron Rodgers is not backing down, and I'm here for it. Now, I've never thought Aaron and Green Bay are a perfect fit. You know, the Malibu mansion, the celebrity girlfriends and fiance, uh, you know, I've never, he's California cool. They are definitely not cool, but it doesn't matter. You don't have to be a perfect fit in life. That's nonsense. You do not, I don't think Russell Wilson and Seattle are always a perfect fit, but the bottom line here is it can't grow to resentment because that's when Tom Brady left. Tom Brady admits now, God, you couldn't get me back to New England in that weather. Tom's from California. He moved to Florida. He admits he never liked the weather. You're never going to get him back there. He had a place in New York. He never necessarily felt like Sully in the north end of Boston. Tom, Tom and Giselle don't feel like Boston. They feel like celebrities. They feel like Bel Air. They feel like Hollywood. They feel like Paris. They feel like London. But it was fine until it became resentment at the end when Tom did the documentary and his wife said he just wanna feel he wants to feel respected. Once it was resentment, it was over. It was over. And this is now resentment. I tell you about that study about once or twice a year. They studied a hundred couples in Seattle at the University of Washington. Money didn't mean divorce, kids didn't mean divorce, in laws didn't mean divorce, people got divorced when it became resentment and eye rolls in the relationship. And that's what Green Bay is. It's now in the resentment category. So now, what will resentment create? Will it create a trade? Will Mark Murphy get fired? I have a hard time believing that Green Bay can pivot from their frugal, rigid DNA to blow up the front office. It is so precedent-setting, I cannot see it happening. But I got to respect for Aaron Rodgers. I got to give him respect here. He wants treatment like Russell Wilson, Patrick Mahomes, and Brady, and he absolutely deserves it. By the way, look at how Buffalo's already treating Josh Allen. They get him a new toy at wide receiver every year. Every year, Brian Dable, the offensive coordinator, they pay him more and keep him and pay him more and Everything Buffalo does is to make sure the development and the growth and the happiness of Josh Allen. They ask his opinion. He's a kid. 
Look at how Baltimore's treating Lamar Jackson. They get him a Greg Roman. They pay Greg Roman. Greg Roman, the coordinator, is going nowhere. He needs receivers. They get him receivers. He needs a back. They get him Mark Ingram. Look at how Baltimore has treated their star. I mean, look at look at look at the Chargers in the offseason. What do they do? Upgrade offensive line Justin Herbert. Protect him. Pay for the center that Green Bay wouldn't pay for. So Aaron's saying, I'm not going to apologize. I, I'm not going to apologize at the altar of, of money. If I have to give up some money, I'll give up some money. I don't care. And I, I got to be honest, in a world where everybody is paralyzed, it's a 24-7 conveyor belt of apologies for stuff most people don't have to apologize for. I'm into it. I like it. Aaron's making everybody uncomfortable, and I'm really here for it. This is interesting. Tyler Dunn, who broke a story about a year, year and a half ago, we brought him on the show, you know, voicing some of the concerns in the front office. It's funny. Aaron Rodgers did sort of dismiss Tyler Dunn's article about the Packers, but the reality is he was saying that Aaron and Mark Murphy did not get along. Now we find out they don't. Aaron now admitting this all started a year ago. So Tyler Dunn yesterday came out and said, I've heard Aaron Rodgers was telling opposing players this past season he was looking to build a team elsewhere. He wanted to see if they'd be interested in teaming up. He obviously has been thinking about this for a while. And, and you know, it, it's Aaron's a smart guy, right? Aaron's smart enough to see around corners and see trouble brewing. So, I mean, just on a macro level, just think about this. Think about all the teams Green Bay is considered like a Super Bowl teams, right? So Kansas City is one of those teams. Green Bay is one of those teams. Kansas City has upgraded their offensive line extensively this offseason. They appear to be better. Tampa Bay, not sure how they could get better, but they re-signed everybody. The Rams finally got Sean McVay, a Pro Bowl level quarterback. Buffalo was 13 and 3. They addressed in the draft their only real weakness, pass rush defensive line. Seattle's 12 and 4. They've upgraded on the O-line and wide receiver and tight end. Indy was 11 and 5. Their weakness, athletic ability at quarterback, major upgrade. Cleveland was 11 and 5. Major weakness secondary, massive upgrade. Baltimore was 11 and 5. Major weakness, wide receiver, major upgrade. Green Bay is the only Super Bowl contender in that group that got worse. A, they lost a Pro Bowl center. B, they didn't sign any big free agents. C, they had a bizarre draft in which even people that liked the Packers, Pro Football Focus, gave it close to a D. It was a weird draft. One potential playmaker. One. Is it possible Aaron Rodgers says, what the hell, this team's Super Bowl window's closed anyway? There's this belief that if you can get to a conference championship, you can win the Super Bowl. That's not true. Andrew Luck, 11-5, and five, got to a conference championship. Had a little easier route, then they got crushed. Just because you get to a conference championship does not mean you're a Super Bowl team. Green Bay two years ago got there, and they got rolled, rolled by San Francisco that lost to Kansas City. So this idea that we all know that Super Bowl windows, especially in the NBA, they close fast. That Seahawks Super Bowl window, it was like, bang! That Niners Super Bowl window with Harbaugh, huge shrinks. It does not last long. I mean, New England had one, closed for a decade. Then it opened back up. But you, people forget New England had two dynasties, early and late. But in the middle, it closed. They, they got old defensively, missed on some draft picks. They weren't a Super Bowl team. So you start looking. And last year, you can make an argument. Everything worked out perfectly for Green Bay. So who was in their way? San Francisco. Oh, Garoppolo got hurt. Tom Brady went to Tampa, but... There was a pandemic, so he didn't even get a preseason or OTAs. It was the perfect time. Drew Brees was officially too old, and they were the number one seed. They had home field advantage. And oh, by the way, the Rams, McVay and Goff, there was a fissure in that by about week 11 and 12, and that it was kind of the perfect year. Is Aaron Rodgers looking at this thing thinking, so now I got a, no Pro Bowl center. 
uh, good luck with Tom Brady getting the number one seed and getting Lambeau at home in the playoffs. That's probably not going to happen. Now McVay's got a Pro Bowl quarterback. Now Garoppolo or, you know, reports this morning, Trey Lance is popping. They're back. You know, maybe maybe he's just saying, you know, the heck with it. Well, why not move? The window's closed. And Aaron knows it. I mean, they're very dependent on Devontae Adams. I mean, just think about this. If I said to you, Devontae Adams, who's missed six games in two years, great player, torn ACL at practice yesterday, we completely eliminate the Packers from the Super Bowl bubble. No other good team. I mean, if I said Chris Godwin or Mike Evans out for the year for Tampa, so what? They're still favored to win the NFC. I mean, I, no other team feels as dependent on one skill player. And Devontae Adams, as great as he is, he gets banged up. So, you know, maybe Aaron sees something that uh, Green Bay can't acknowledge. Last year worked out perfectly. Everybody else getting better. Green Bay looks slightly worse. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.